Hey, Mr. Matthews, my name's Pete. Thanks for having me in your house today. I really appreciate the opportunity to take a look at your garage floor. Welcome, Pete. Let me guess. You're just here to put down some of that there epoxy up on my floor. Yeah, believe it or not, we install a product that's four times stronger than epoxy. Four times, huh? Let me guess, you're some scientist, NASA type of stuff. You probably put that stuff up on the space shuttle or up on the moon. No, unfortunately we have not installed on the space shuttle or the moon yet. USA, 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 USA. See that flag? That's what I'm talking about. Woo! All right, welcome back, everybody. Welcome to the Coding Monkey channel. As you can see from that intro, that's why they call me the Coding Monkey. I like to have fun, I like to joke around, but I take my coatings and my floor coating installation very serious. And so in this video, we're actually gonna sit back and we're gonna talk about why polyurea is four times stronger than epoxy. The technology, one, you should use what floor over the other, and why I've learned how to use polyurea versus epoxy. All right, so first off, I've been doing coatings for about 15 years now. I started off working for a residential garage floor installations company, and we very quickly grew into a manufacturing company. In 2006, when polyaspartics were first coming to the scene, um, when Bayer first released their patent into the garage floor market, we started applying them direct to concrete for garage floor coatings. That was essentially one of the first one day floor coating systems. So back in 2006, 2007, 2008, we were really kind of cutting our teeth on innovation, polyaspartics for garage floors. Um, traditionally, everybody's been using epoxies. It just doesn't work. So every, as you know, everything has to change through time. So 2006, 2007, um, polyaspartics were really taking off as a garage floor one day installations. Well, being a residential garage floor applicator and then working for somebody who's very, very innovative, we started researching and thinking of our own products. And so in 2007, 2008, we actually launched our own full line of products in the polyurea world. Now, just because you hear the word polyurea does not mean that it's 100% a polyaspartic. Now, every polyurea is not a polyaspartic, but every polyaspartic is technically a polyurea. Lots of chemistry that happens within that. But back in 2007 and 8, when we came out with this polyurea as our base coat, it pretty much revolutionized the one day garage floor industry. So when we talk about coatings and polyureas being four times stronger than epoxies, it's actually very, very true. So one thing to remember with any floor coating, um, epoxies, polyureas, polyaspartics, or anybody that you guys are out there doing uh, wood coatings and ceilings or anything like that, um, prep is by far your most important part. So take your time, invest in the proper equipment, um, diamond tooling, sandpaper, whatever type of medium you're working on, and make sure that you have adequate prep. If you don't have that, it doesn't matter what product you're installing, it's all gonna fail. So. Once we kind of started with polyureas and learning the technology um, and getting them to cure slow enough where you could install them, but yet fast enough to get them done in a day, we really kind of tweaked that technology and that's where we talk about the four times stronger than epoxy. Now, the most important part of that is what we call elongation. Stuff I refer to as stretch flex move. Okay, So polyureas by nature are very, very elastomeric. Think of a truck bed liner. Everybody's familiar with uh, truck bed liners and how durable they are. That is essentially a polyurea. So you could have a very, very hard impact on a polyurea and it, it'll absorb the impact where essentially like a, po uh, sorry, excuse me, an epoxy is actually going to get very brittle over time and become hard and that's why they crack chips, delaminate over time. So polyureas. So when we talk about elongation, Elongation is essentially as much, if I had a piece in front of me, is how far could I stretch it? Think of like a silly putty. It's very, very elastomeric. You can stretch it and it'll kind of come back onto itself. Polyurea is essentially the exact same way. Polyurea, depending upon which one, is gonna have approximately 180 to 200% elongation. So if I took it at a quarter of an inch, I could stretch it almost over um, an inch. 
four times essentially what it currently is at, and then it'll go back to its original shape. That is extremely important for garage floors or commercial environments when you have freeze and thaw cycles. So up here in the northern states, our garage floors go through a freeze and thaw cycle every hour. So especially now in the spring, as the concrete starts off colder and then warms up through the day, your concrete's actually expanding. And you need a product that's gonna be able to expand and contract with that concrete without becoming brittle over time. That advantage of your elongation with your polyurea is dramatically enhanced when you properly prepare the substrate and you apply it correctly. Now, polyureas just aren't for everybody. They're very fast carrying, can get pretty tricky to work with. So if you wanna get into learning how to install a one day system utilizing a polyurea um, type of floor, please contact me. Um, I'm not gonna talk about my employer or the products that I currently use, but my email is in the description below. Feel free to email me and I will get you put on the right direction. Now, in 2008, when we came up with this type of product, it pretty much revolutionized the floor coating industry. Now remember, a polyurea is different than a true polyaspartic polyurea. So people tend to get that kind of caught up um, and think that all polyureas are the same. It's just not the case. And so when you hear people talk about um, the one day system being too fast, well, what they mean by that is our old technology, stuff that I started on in 2006, seven, was the polyaspartics being put direct to concrete. Now in 2008, when we came up with a different product with the pure polyureas, that is different than the true polyaspartics. Now, nothing against polyaspartics, they're just not meant to be put to concrete. So we utilize a polyurea for a base coat, and then we throw our, typically a full broadcast of decorative flakes, and then we use the polyaspartic top coat over the top of that, okay? So that technology's been around since about 2008 and really revolutionized the garage floor industry, um, along with commercial applications by no, all means, it worked perfectly. Now, you're gonna have the old school epoxy guys kind of watching this right now saying that there's nothing like an epoxy that's gonna wick into the concrete because it's a slow curing product and you're gonna have better long-term adhesion. Well, unfortunately, that technology and that terminology and that ideology was correct in probably 2000 or earlier. Well, once you start taking technology and you twist it and you learn, everything evolves from there. Polyureas are actually gonna have a better mechanical bond to concrete than epoxies do over time. Lots of chemistry that goes into here, but that's why we talk about polyurease being four times stronger than epoxy, is because adhesion, elongation, um, impact resistance, and overall scratch resistance when we talk about the poly, uh, polyaspartics, UV stable, um, stuff like that. So there's lots of differences, and we'll cover that in a different video, but when we talk about four times stronger, the polyurea versus the epoxy, that's why we talk about um, it being so much stronger, is because your long-term adhesion. Now, the technology of a polyurea versus the technology of an epoxy are completely different, apples and oranges. So, without diving into too much of the chemistry, which I'm not a chemist by no means, I just have worked as an installations guy and as a manufacturer for almost 15 years now. So. The company I work for is an actual manufacturer. I have blended all the raw materials into the finished product. And remember, every product that I will tell you guys about is 100% made in the USA. Proud veteran, stand behind the USA, you should also. One of the reasons polyureas bond so well to concrete in the long term is what we call a free monomer technology. Now, epoxies, on the other hand, are essentially your A and your B, your amine and then your resin, and of course they catalyze. And since epoxies typically take eight to 12 hours to cure, slower ones on your casting resins and stuff like that, but if you're doing a traditional garage floor application, you're looking at about eight to 12 hour cure time. So and traditionally what people are thinking is once you catalyzed your A and your B, it takes that eight to 12 hours to actually soak in and grab roots into the concrete. Well, that's just essentially your A and your B and what we call a mechanical bond to the concrete. It's just a simply wetting into the concrete. A polyurea, on the other hand, has your A and B that catalyzes, and then yes, it does soak into the concrete, but a difference in a polyurea versus an epoxy, it actually can cure in one to two hours, depending upon speed, temperature, humidity. 
But where the huge advantage is of the polyurea versus the epoxy is that free monomer. So let's just think of in our chemical chain. If we have five parts of part A and actually have six parts of part B. Of course, I don't have six fingers. Imagine. So let's just say we have 5A and 6B. Once those two A and B essentially comes together, we have that free or that sixth finger kind of floating down. Well, that free monomer is actually very moisture sensitive. It's actually considered a moisture scavenger. All concrete has moisture. Should have approximately two to 5% moisture. Now, when you take that A and B and you put it together and you take that free monomer that actually seeks out the moisture within the concrete, grabs onto it and creates root that way, you actually have a chemical bond with the concrete, not a mechanical bond. So over the long term of the concrete, you're gonna have very good adhesion. Now, moisture and hydrostatic pressure and stuff is for a different video, but when you test your concrete and you take the proper steps to make sure that you have the proper moisture within your concrete, that is why a polyurea is gonna bond so much longer because it continually bonds to that moisture and it seeks out that moisture within the concrete. So you're continually always having adhesion. Epoxies, back to A and B and wetting in, the mechanical bond, over time essentially become more and more brittle. They get harder and harder and they tend to shrink. And of course, as they shrink, they tend to lift up off the concrete. Then as they cure, they get more and more brittle. So they're very, very susceptible to impact resistance. So an epoxy floor that's done two years ago versus an epoxy floor that's done 20 years ago is gonna be a lot more brittle on the 20 year end side. So if you drop a wrench, a hammer, or something like that on it, chances are it's gonna just pop off the concrete because it doesn't have the elongation or the stretch flex move to be able to take that impact and then of course it just has the mechanical adhesion so it just pops off the concrete. So that's traditionally why you see epoxy failures down the road where a polyurea stuff that's been done 10, 12 years ago it still has extreme adhesion to the concrete. All right, so let's wrap it up. Okay. Yes, I did say polyurea is four times stronger than epoxy. That is correct. There's terms out there, polyurea six times, 10 times, 130,000 million times stronger than epoxy. Yeah, is it? No, let's be real. Is it on the space shuttle? Not yet. Can it be? Sure it could. Now, lots of differences go into that. So now, let's wrap it up. Now, I did say polyurea is four times stronger than epoxy, and it is. You've probably seen stuff out there where polyureas or polyspartics are six times stronger, 18 times stronger, 247,000 times stronger. Yeah, is it? Numbers are kind of relative, but we do real world testing, adhesion testing, elongation testing, slip resistance testing, uh, chemical testing, UV resistance testing. Stuff like that is what proves where a polyurea and a polyaspartic outdoes a standard traditionally epoxy. So, can it be put on the space shuttle? Absolutely. Has it? Not yet. Should it? Absolutely. So, hit the likes button. Follow me, subscribe, lots more videos. We're actually gonna do a whole tutorial and a video series about coatings themselves. So if you guys like the interview style, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe, and we will dive deeper into more and more stuff. So comment below, let me know what you guys wanna see when pick my brain. Again, email me with a lot of your questions on product knowledge or anything like that. Links are in the description below, and we'll see you next time. USA. USA, USA, USA. See that flag? So I'm talking about. Let me in my zone. Please don't let me in my zone. Let me in my zone. Let me, let me in my zone. Let me in my zone. Please don't let me in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go and play that. Take you down, I'ma say that. Money me a couple dollars. Telling you now this payback. So I keep what I'm doing cause I own that And I stay in the lab and I kill everything But I don't ever move, I'm a Kodak So don't, I'm gone Find me back in my home I'm working like so much They swear I had me a clone Can't answer my phone now Just leave it there, that tone Ballin' can't beat me up Cause I'm back in my zone now Cause I'm back in my zone now Now. All lane can't beat me up cause I'm back in my zone now Back in my zone now Let me in my zone Let me in my zone
in my zone. Please don't let me in my zone. Let me in my zone. Let me let me in my zone. Let me in my zone. Please don't let me in. Please don't let me in my zone. I just need some time on my own. All these people trying to get a conversation. You can conversate to that tone. Uh, my God up on that throne. Yeah, so I'm never alone. Yeah, all these people trying to box me in. I'm Mayweather. It's on. Yeah, now they ask where I'm at. Making hits that I'm back. I'm MJ. I'm two three man. I just need some time back. I'm zoned in like defense. My life gone no recess. But I live my best one, so I got no regrets. So go, I'm gone. Find me back in my home. I'm working like so much. They swear I had me a clown. Can't answer my phone now. Just leave it there. That tone. Ballin' can't beat me up 'cause I'm back in my zone now. 'Cause I'm back in my zone now. Zone now. All in can't beat me up cause I'm back in my zone now. Back in my zone now. Let me into my zone. Let me, let me into my zone. Uh, let me into my zone. Please don't let me into my zone. Let me into my zone. Let me, let me into my zone. Let me in my zone. Let me let me in my zone. Let me in my zone. Please don't let me in.